time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, MTK Global. I'm here with Dominic Ingle. How are you feeling, Dominic? I'm good, thank you. You, uh, you nervous, excited uh, ahead of this fight? I'm just hoping that uh, you know the snow goes and uh, you don't interrupt the boxing on Saturday night, and uh, hopefully I can get back to and do a bit of sledging with the kids. How's Kel been since the, the, the loss, like mentally? Because uh, a lot of people are concerned, like, where, you know, where's his head at? Sort of thing. Well, you never know. You're never going to know where a fighter's head at. You know, fighters keep themselves to themselves, and they deal with it in their own particular way. Um, you know, obviously, Kel went through a bit of a dark, dark period. You know, everybody was still in contact with him through that, throughout that time. But he never really gives the game away. Kel, he just like gets on with stuff. And what's going off in his head? You know, he dealt with all the time. And eventually, he came through it. You know, been on a couple of training camps, and you know, everybody rallied round him, and you know, involved him in everything. And you know, sometimes you could see him thinking, you know, what's it all about? Yeah. But eventually, when he fell back into his training, you know, that seemed to put it back into place for Kel. Once he's in a good place, physically. You know the mental aspect follows, and, and that's what happened with Kel. You know, probably right up to the point of you know in January when we went on training camp because he was a bit down. He knew this fight was coming, but yeah. he took himself away, um, got himself on track, and within you know two or three two or three weeks being on on camp, he was fine. What's your honest thoughts on Rabchenko? Because when I heard Rabchenko, I thought, oh, that's a bit for a comeback. That's, that's it's a tough he, fight. It's a tough fight. Um, you know, he's he's not a big name. But he's one of these guys who can eat very, very easily treat yeah, you. Yeah, if, if you know the game, you know that. If you, if you know the game, and he's, you know, he's only been beat twice, um, and he'll come to fight. He's sparred Kelly. He knows what Kel's like. Kel knows what he's like. But you know, they're at different stages of their preparation for fights. And who turns up on Saturday night? You know, we're going to get 100% Kel. We're going to get 100% Rabchenko. Uh, and that's, you know, that's where the problem's going to lie. He's very, you know. You know, it's not a foregone conclusion yeah. that Kel Brook is going to beat Ravchenko, but Kel needed an opponent to test himself. Uh, you know, maybe he's bitten off more than he can chew at this stage. You know, after the, the loss to Errol Spence, but you know, knowing Kel Brook, he's very, very competitive, and you know, he's going to put in the performance. And you've got a teeth for Shafiq. We've got a teeth Shafiq against Appleyard. That's an interesting fight. You know, Appleyard's been at an higher level, but you know, a teeth wanting that title. You know, a title fight or a ten-round fight on a big bill. And that's what he's got. He's been given the platform to, to show what he's got. You know, he's had ups and downs in his career, and uh, he's come back from that. He's trained well. He's had some good sparring, so that'll be an interesting fight. Because I just interviewed him, and he's really fired up for this, isn't he? He's, he, he's, he's fired up. But listen, you know, you can be fired up all you want. You know, when you get in that ring, you get, there, you get in that ring, and you put it all together. You know, he's got to stick to the plan. We've got a game plan, and uh, he's got to stick to it. You know, Apple Yard's a dangerous kid. He can bang. He's mature. Uh, you know, he's been in the big fights. What's the deal with Kid Galahad? Because to me, he's like one of the most underrated skill-wise. Really, really talented, but he hasn't seemed to break through to the mainstream. Would you agree uh, with that? No, yeah, but you know, he's, he's, he's been through a few tough times himself. But you know, hopefully on Saturday night he's going to shine. I've had a word with him. Uh, you know, this year he's going to be in line for the IBF featherweight title, so he's going to be mandatory. So you know, we're on the way. We just need to keep winning. And um, Billy Joe Saunders. You seem to have revitalised him. Would you say that? Because would, would, would that, not not so much the performance, just how he's talking in interviews. And yeah, that. He's, he's enjoying his boxing. You know, I've been in boxing a long time. He's been in boxing a long time. It gets monotonous from whichever side you're at, whether you're a trainer or a boxer or whatever. It's monotonous, and you've got to keep it interesting. You know, you've got to keep the camp the camp happy. You've got to have the right characters in the camp. You've got to be motivated. You know, last week he trips all the way down to Derby to see a guy who was you know a five and zero novice, uh, yeah. one of his pals fighting, and he, you know he loved it. His eyes were alight. He knew he knew the kid was in a fight. He boxed a guy at six foot eight. Dan Cooper, this guy was, and uh, I said to Billy, "Look, this could be, a, you know, could all go wrong." And his eyes lit up because he loved to see a scrap. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he, he's uh, he, that kind of stuff keeping him on track. He's, he's interested to get in boxing. And what did you think of the uh, Eubank Junior fight? The, the, the tactics they used. I'm only asking you from a perspective of a trainer. I'm not dissing him. I'm just asking straight. I, up I can't really tell you because I didn't watch it. All right, okay. but uh, you <laughs> did, know, did you I, hear nice I, comments? No, I didn't even watch comments. Listen, you know. Eubanks is Eubanks, he can fight. If he stood in front of me, he'll have a fight, but there's, there's, a, lot, he's, there's a lot he's got to learn. Um, you know, by all accounts, it was a good fight, he got a great crowd in, um, you know, he did good TV numbers, so maybe he's going to go back and, and regroup and analyse what he's done. As long as he's, you know, he's, he's self critical of what he's done and he can adjust, you know, he can probably come back stronger. And ideally, if you could pick a weight for Kel, just you, pick a weight. Where, where are you most comfortable with him? Because people say 154, 160, you no, know him no, best. No, I think 154 has got to be, you know, he, he went up to middleweight, he, he, he showed that he could, you know, 
Golovkin's a one-off. There's not many fighters in the middleweight division like Golovkin. You know, there's Golovkin, Canelo. Um, but you know, I think the ideal weight for Kel is 154. I think that's that, that's his best position. You know, he's, he's just one division up from Baltimore where he's been all his life. I don't think two weight divisions is where he needs to be. You know, maybe at this point he has but he has boxed above that before. But you know, look at him now, stood on the stage talking to, you know. Michelle Phelps, he's in great shape, he looks fine, he looks happy, he looks healthy, and I think that's the way he's going to stay at. Dominic Ingle, thank you for giving me your time. I'll let you rush off. I really appreciate that. No Thanks problem. for talking to IFL TV. Thank you. Thank you. First time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.